My name is Dr. David Granit. I'm professor of pediatrics and ophthalmology in the United States, in San Diego, California, where I'm director of the Ratner Children's Eye Center for the Shiley Eye Institute at the University of California, San Diego. Children don't have a voice of their own to tell you, I can't see. A baby doesn't wake up and say, Mom, I'm having trouble seeing today. They don't even know that they're having trouble seeing. A three-year-old may not know that they're having trouble seeing. So it's up to us to look for the signs of difficulty. Sometimes it's as simple as they won't make eye contact with you. By three to six months of age, a baby should be looking at their parents and making eye contact and smiling. A baby that looks away and won't make eye contact is a good sign that there might be a problem. Another sign might be that the eyes are wiggling or shaking back and forth where they won't look at you directly and they just rhythmically keep beating back and forth. A child, when they look at you, if you see one eye looks normal and the other eye drifts off, that's not good. That means that eye is not being used. In photographs, if you constantly, persistently see white in the middle of the eye instead of the normal eye color, that's a giveaway that there might be a growth like a cataract or even a tumor inside the eye. As children get older, they might squint and have difficulty looking far away. They might not want to look at a book or interact with toys or other children because they're having difficulty with their eyes. So those are some of the very easy things that you can look for. A parent who's had more than one child often knows this right away. The first child, not so much. The, the other part about identifying the problem is what I mentioned before, what parents do. But there are things that the system should do, doctors can do, nurses can do, a pediatrician can do, people who are doing charitable work can do, which is to screen the child using low-cost devices. I saw one recently developed here at the L.B. Prasad Eye Institute for 50 cents. That's cost-effective in a way to screen. But there are screening programs that go out there. We screen 20,000 children a year to identify if they have an eye problem because the parents often don't know. So once we find out that they have a problem, you need to do something about it. If you find that a child needs glasses and they can't afford glasses, then you haven't helped them. Giving a child glasses is restoring sight to them. So you need to have a way to make sure that that child can either get free glasses or be able to get to the glasses somehow just to wear them. How simple that is. Imagine needing glasses and not being able to get them. So funding for that needs to be available, whether it's insurance or through a non-governmental organization or from the government. Somehow we have to get glasses in the hands of those kids. And the kids that need more, if you have a tumor in your eye, that's life-threatening. You will die if it's not taken care of. So we have to have identification of the problem and then a, a, an, an organizational way to get that child to the proper doctor. Without an infrastructure and planning for that, it all falls. To spend money and identifying a child with an eye disease and have no backup plan for what to do afterwards is wasted money. Understanding that children's vision is so vital to the health of a country. India, for example, 40% of the population are kids. If those kids can't see, they can't be educated. If you can't be educated, how do you change your life? And that's now being recognized all around the world. So we understand that we have to take care of these children. There are simple things. Terrible nearsightedness can actually harm the eye. And there are new techniques, very simple, to put a drop in a child's eye that can slow down the development of nearsightedness. That's now being instituted in most places around the world that's coming to India now. So we have opportunities globally to make a difference. The World Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus has developed consensus statements from doctors around the world getting together and saying, this is what we ought to be doing, the minimum of what we should be taking care of children. Because a child's born to someone in a more developed country, or a less developed country doesn't mean they shouldn't get care. If a, if a child wins the parent lottery and is lucky enough to be born to a parent that can afford care or can get access to care, that doesn't mean a child who isn't doesn't deserve that. It is the right of every child to see. And there's no reason why we as the adults shouldn't take that on. It's the mark of a society that we take care of our children. That is how you judge a society. And these children deserve that care and they'll get it because places like the World Society are making sure that information is disseminated.
There are new advancements that are happening every day in medicine and pediatric eye care is no different. Some of them are simple. Uh, there, there are ones that are, are now so inexpensive to be able to identify if a child can see or not see uh, by even using an, uh, an iPhone to take a picture of a child. And then there are some really advanced ones that in the middle of an operation, you have a device that can actually be as if you cut through the eye to tell you each of the layers of the eye. It's science fiction. It's magic that we can look at this in the middle of surgery and have a computer image generated on top of what you're looking at to tell you where you are. That will allow us to do finer and more delicate surgery than has ever been done before. So it's incredible. We have simple things like an eye drop and advanced computer technology and lasers that will be using, used in children that have never been used before. There's a whole lot of things that go on in adult eye care that are finally being brought to children. Implantation of lenses to replace the human lens when it turns cloudy, a cataract that's called, that happens in children. We can now implant those lenses in, in children in a way that could never be done before. Uh, we have lasers that now allow us to save sight when we couldn't before. Injections into a premature baby's eye to stop it from growing badly and blinding that eye for th that child for their whole life. Now a simple injection can prevent that from happening. These are miraculous changes that are going on that can make sure children will see for a lifetime. If you help a child who's a baby, it's 80 years of lifetime of vision. And the economic impact of improving their vision is almost incalculable because now that child does not need support because they can support themselves. They become a taxpayer, for heaven's sakes. They do so many things to make this world a better place because of the simple things we do to help them. Adults are aware that sometimes their eyes become dry and irritated, but everyone has ignored for a generation the fact that children also get dry eyes. It's being made worse by screens, iPhones, iPads, all of the little screens that we look at today, because when we look at a screen, we do this. We stare and we don't blink and our eyes dry out. And there are many diseases that also cause problems with dry eyes. The, the, some of them are unusual and not typical, but those children suffer because no one's looking and no one's paying attention. There's an old saying, if you don't look for a disease, you can't find it. And now we're making it clear to doctors who, ch who care for children, they need to look for dry eye in kids.